I realised that getting the bait in the swim and more bait than anyone else, because in them days, people used to fish with 10 baits around their rods, you know? No one had access like they did now to 10 key. It was 10 baits. So I think when I started using a lot of peanuts, my catch rates went up a lot. And then when I could do that with boilies, my catch rates were high. So the one thing we didn't touch on there is the discipline. So you, you are a teenager and you are working at your fishing like it's a job. Yeah. Tell us about the discipline that that needed. Oh, uh, we were so keen. Like, it was unbelievable how keen we was in those days. I mean, when I was, when I fished Hainal, going back again there, you know, we used to wait till it was dark and we used to walk out, swim out with our baits at night, you know, and, and so just to do that in itself is, 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 a, is, is crazy, isn't it? And then when I got to Durham, making baits on the bank and at Hainal, when we used to make baits on the bank, that was a, a part of our fishing. My mum banned me from the kitchen when I was really young. Um, you know, the amount of times that my mum had come home from work and see my kitchen bombed with flavourings. And, and it was soon, it was soon like, I'm not having it anymore till, you know, I'm not having this anymore. And then we had to make the bait on the bank. And we used to arrive at the lake with no bait, just a sack of mix um, or a sack of ingredients. And we mix up the ingredients uh, and our eggs. And that was it. And we used to make the bait before we actually fished. So we'd turn up, whoever we were, together, you know. And the first night, generally, we never fished. Uh, we had a lot more time in them days. So all our sessions were, were between four and ten nights. So we'd turn up, make our bait put it out warm. We always used to bait with warm baits. We always thought that that was a big edge. You know, another ingredient I used to use a lot in those days was sesame seed oil. I used to use a lot of sesame seed oil in my baits, um, as well as, as attractors like flavorings and sweeteners, and always put them in warm. We always said, if you put the bait in warm, it's got a good effect. And that's how it was. But yeah, the discipline, when you think about what we were actually doing, uh, you know, I don't think many, we were blowing people away. People were turning up and then walking into our swim and not, and never seen anyone with a whole, you know, our sleeping bags we were using to dry our baits on. We were drying our baits on our sleeping bags and now your sleeping bag would be lying on the floor and it'd just be a big carpet of boilies. I remember the first time I ever met Rob Malin, who was a pretty much a legend in them days. Um, you know, he'd, he'd fished about, he'd come walking into my swim and he, he just was like, what is going on? You know, what are you actually doing? You know, because it is just, it was, it's something that we, we done. I'm sure others done it as well. You know, I'm not saying that we were the first people ever to do it, but, but I'd never seen anyone do it. And that is what we've done. Talk to us about the effect that it had. First of all, was there, from reading your book, I remember that there was hostility towards the fact that you were piling bait in. People didn't get it, like you've mentioned with Rob, but they were probably quite angry about the fact you were filling it in as well. Yeah, yeah. I remember the start of the season at Darrenth, me and who I fished with at the time, we'd rolled, and the day before the Darrenth season started, we'd gone over a local park. This is where we used to do, because our mum wouldn't let us no more. We'd gone over a local park, local to us, and we've rolled a massive big dustbin full of bait. And in them days, it was rolling two at a time or three at a time. We used to be able to do three at a time with your hand. And they're all big baits, you know, because if you're going to do a 50 egg mix, you ain't going to want to do tiny little baits. So it's all big baits. And we would literally, Darren, we turned up, absolutely filled it in, you know, and I don't think nothing was caught for the first three days of the season um, on a tip lake. And in them days, a lot of the big names were on the tip lake and uh, like, we, were t we were kids. These were guys, who, you know, they, they had businesses, they had jobs and, you know, they, they, you know they, they'd been around for a long time. And they looked at us as inferior to them, you know. And they thought you'd ruined the start. Yeah, they thought we'd ruined their lake because, and we did, we ruined their fishing because they never caught nothing because we held the fish. And I remember when we fished Darren that year, that tip lake, which has become quite famous, our catches out of there, I think we held the fish for the first six weeks, you know, and I think the rest of the lake 
You know, we, we, were, we were literally catching some fish twice a day. That's how ridiculous it got. Do you think those fish were hooked on the high fat, high protein boily? Definitely. They were hooked on the high fat, they were hooked on the high protein, they were hooked on the amount of bait as well. You know, they were used to coming in a swim and seeing an handful of baits there. They might get one or two. They've got a big carpet, a banquet. And what we were doing, we, we weren't silly. We'd, we'd fished hard lakes in the past and, and we'd empty lakes before we went there. And so what we'd do, we had a little plan and we'd say, right, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to overbait for two days. So for two days, and we'll stop all the takes. We'll actually go mental, roll absolutely tons of bait, fill it in like you won't believe. And then all of a sudden, then we'll say, right, two days, no bait, just the 20 round each rod. So we were even dictating what was coming next. And this is, you know. Have you ever had fish literally dancing to your tune as much as they were ever again? I have, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah, a lot. Because I've learned. I've learned how this, how you can do this, you know. Um, I mean, for instance, I'll, I'll, I'll pick one fish out. Big bollocks. Very famous fish. You know, all the superstars wanted to catch big bollocks. That year, they told us that it was dead because the fish had been, uh, in the close season, had been caught. Uh, had been found dead, sorry, in the close season, washed up. And everyone said, ah, oh, big bollocks is dead, big bollocks is dead until I caught him twice in a day. I caught him in the morning and then I had him again in the afternoon. And then three days later, my mate caught him, Tony, who was with me. And it just become unbelievable. It, it was, and then we, we absolutely battered them out of one swim, one part of the lake. And we said, right, I'll tell you what we're gonna do now. We sat down, we had a little meeting. You know, it was amazing really what we were doing. And we, we're gonna now move to a different part of the lake. Because our results were so good, the rest of the anglers had gone. They'd had enough of watching these two kids. Yeah, they'd had enough. So we pretty much had the lake to ourselves, And then we moved into two other swims. Uh, when we moved into those two swims, we'd done exactly the same. We went round there, we put 60 egg mix, 70 egg mix, piled it in, give it a few days, went round there and we started having them again. And that's when I caught the big catch. I had three thirties in a day. Amazing. Yeah, so. And those fish benefited in terms of size, didn't they, as well? Ah, yeah. Because of that. Not just size. Um, we could see their scars were healing up. We could see their colors were better. They were fighting harder. You know, there were so many benefits to these fish. It really was unbelievable. And I mean, at the time, when I first went to Darren the, the year before, the lake record was about 31 pound. Uh, there was only one 30 on the complex, uh, one or two 30s on the complex. By the time we'd left, the following year was about 10. And the lake record was 38 pound. So them fish had, had, had put on sort of 20% or 25% of their body weight, some of them. And they just looked better. You could just see that they just looked much better. And how quickly did, did your style of baiting and fishing get out? And, get, and, and how quickly did you see other people doing it? Ah, oh, they, they were on it quick. One of the things that we didn't have in those days was funds. We didn't have a lot of funds. So we used to swap our ideas and tackle for food. So we would literally swap you know, if someone turned up with a load of food, we'd say, right, do you want to be in our gang for a couple of days? You know, as long as we've got access to your bacon sandwiches. And I know it sounds silly now, but we were only kids and this was going on. So it wasn't long before a lot of other anglers started cotting in on and they were just jumping in on our spots as well. So as soon as we left, they were watching where we were fishing, watching where we were baiting, pretty much copying us to, to a tee. How did it affect your mentality, Tal? Were you able to keep um, a sense of perspective or did you think you were the man? Um, it, weren't, it weren't the first time that I'd, that I'd emptied lakes. So I, I'd done it before. So I, I don't think I really got too big-headed about it. 
um, carp fishing, maybe if it was now, it might have been different, but carp fishing was totally different in those days. So, you know, the, 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 that sort of side of carp fishing, like now, people were catching fish to get as many likes as they can on Facebook and stuff like that. You know, we didn't have that. We, we, wasn't, we didn't have any of that. So you'd, you'd only be in a little gang. At Darrenth, we were gods. We really was, and we knew that, you know. Um, you know, for, for years after, if I ever walked around Darrenth, you know, people knew. And they'd start talking. Their people knew, you know, and they wouldn't want me on their lakes. And, and it affected me a lot. It probably didn't help me when I went to other lakes because all of a sudden this kid has, has got this name, you know, or these kids have got this name 